Okay, so what we have here is a person on an elevator. Uh, and we're gonna let this elevator move up and down and do all sorts of different things. Uh, and in doing that, or as that happens, we're going to determine the reading on this scale, because the person is inside the elevator standing on a scale. I don't know if you've never done that before, but if not, you should, because why not? Uh, so, there's a couple things we need to know about this. Uh, the first thing, we're going to go through and we're going to say that this person has a mass of 50 kilograms. Uh, and also, sticking with the convention that we've dealt with before, we're going to say that upward is positive, and you'll see how that plays into things later on. Uh, so, we want to determine the reading by the scale, and that, that reading by the scale is really a force. And I know it's tempting to think that that force, or the reading by the scale, is actually the weight of the person, but it's not. I'll show you what's happening. The weight of the person downward, we know is mg. Uh, this, is, this is given by the, the force by gravity equals mg. That's our equation for weight. Uh, we're going to assume this is on Earth, and so the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. So the interesting thing about this is no matter what the elevator is doing, the weight of the person is going to be a constant. Mg being 50 times 9.8, we'll see that the weight of the person is always 490 newtons. That never changes. Um, the scale, however, is going to change what it reads, and that's because this scale doesn't actually read the weight of a person. A scale measures how hard it's having to push on this person to hold them up. So really what the scale is doing is reporting the normal force. And in different situations, the scale is going to read different values because that normal force is going to vary. So the first situation I want to look at is a simple situation. We're just going to let this elevator just hang here and not move. That means its velocity is going to be equal to zero. Uh, so in order to determine the magnitude of the normal force, that is the reading by the scale, uh, what we need to do is look at Newton's second law. And we're going to look at Newton's second law in the vertical axis. So sum of all forces in the y-axis equals m times a in the y-axis. Okay, Elise, if we're on an elevator and the elevator is not moving, then what does f equal? In looking at this, the sum of all forces is actually made up of two forces. That's the normal force and the weight downward. So we've got the normal force upward, and then in the opposite direction, or downward, we're going to have the force by gravity. That's going to equal the person's mass times their acceleration in the y-axis. Well, we already know the force by gravity. We're trying to solve for Fn. So Fn minus 490 equals 50 times this person's acceleration. We realize if they're sitting still at zero meters per second, they're also not accelerating. That means the acceleration is zero. This entire term is zero. And solving for Fn, we find Fn equals 490 newtons. Now there's nothing huge or groundbreaking about that. Uh, this just means the normal force when this person is not accelerating vertically is equal to the weight by gravity. This could be just a person standing on a street corner. It doesn't necessarily have to be in an elevator. So I'm gonna change this up a little bit, and let's now have this elevator move upward at a constant two meters per second. Again, Newton's second law is still gonna apply. In fact, we're gonna see no matter what we do to this elevator, Newton's second law vertically is always going to apply. The sum of all forces in the y-axis equals m times acceleration in the y-axis. And just like before, we still only have these same two forces acting on this person. There's not some third force that comes into play here. It's just the balance between Fn and Mg. So this line is actually going to be the same again. Just because the person is moving upward doesn't change anything about the weight of the person or the actual force by gravity on the person. The, the attraction between the person's mass and the Earth's mass is in no way dependent on what they're doing. So this force by gravity is still going to be 490 newtons. So we're going to have Fn minus 490 equals the person's mass times their acceleration vertically. Now be careful, people want to put in 2 meters per second here. 
That's the velocity. The acceleration, because this is constant velocity, is zero. So again, this term is zero, and Fn equals 490 newtons. And you're wondering to yourself, what is this stupid video about? We keep getting Fn equals 490 newtons. Fn always equals the weight of the person. Well, it's not. Let's go one step farther. Let's let this elevator accelerate. Okay, we're finally gonna let this thing accelerate. This could be an elevator on the basement floor accelerating upward. We're gonna have an upward acceleration of three meters per second squared. That's up. The direction of this acceleration is gonna be really important in a moment. Now, we're still applying Newton's second law, the sum of all forces in the y-axis is m times a in the y-axis. We should be starting to see a trend here with this. Elise, if an elevator is accelerating upward, then what does f equal? Here you go. And still, our free body diagram hasn't changed. It's just the magnitude of the normal force might eventually change here. Fn minus Fg still equals m times a in the y. Again, we should be starting to see a pattern here. Fn minus 490, the force by gravity. Because again, the force by gravity is not affected by what this person is doing. If they're moving up, down, or accelerating, that doesn't affect the actual weight of the person. And now we have a 50 kilogram person accelerating at three meters per second squared. And so now we find that the normal force is 640 newtons. Now we see the normal force has grown. This scale would actually read a higher value than it normally would. Now I know it's weird that a scale would read in, in newtons. Uh, this is convertible into pounds. You get on a bathroom scale and stand in an elevator, make that thing accelerate upward, you're gonna see that bathroom scale move. That's exactly what this is telling us right here. So let's change this up a little bit. We'll do another situation here. Uh, let's go through and say the acceleration is going to be three meters per second squared downward. All right, this could be the elevator moving up and slowing down or the elevator starting on the top floor and accelerating downward. This time around, guess what? Newton's second law still applies. If we're in an elevator that is accelerating downward, what does F equal? Here you go. Good job. Actually, it applies all the time. I'm gonna write it down here anyway, though, just to drive that point home. And guess what? We still just have these same two forces, Fn and Fg, acting vertically. This time around, Fn minus 490 is going to equal the mass, that's 50, times the acceleration, that's three, but we have to be careful. Up is positive. That means the downward acceleration is negative. And we solve for Fn, and we find that Fn is equal to 340 newtons. The strange part here is, in this case, the person feels heavier. In this case, the person feels lighter. And what's strange about that is they feel as though they have more or less weight, but their weight hasn't changed. And the strange part about all this is you don't actually feel gravity pulling on you. What you feel is something getting in the way, keeping you from falling downward. And that's a strange thing to say, that you don't feel gravity, but you don't. I'll go one step farther to prove this to you. Let's let this elevator accelerate downward at 9.8 meters per second squared, down. I'm gonna skip this silliness here. I think we've got that the second law is always gonna apply, and that we're only dealing with the normal force of the force by gravity. So in this case, we've got Fn minus 490 has to equal 50 times negative 9.8. Well, you do the math on this and you're gonna find that the normal force is zero. If we were to effectively cut the cable here, this is gonna go into free fall. We're just dropping the person. And that person inside the elevator is effectively just going to wind up floating there. They don't need the floor to support them. They're falling downward, the elevator's falling downward. This person would feel weightless. I want you to think about it. What exactly do you think is happening on something like the space station? 
they're actually in free fall towards the earth. Here's the earth down here. For an astronaut in space on something like the ISS, they're actually falling downward toward the earth. They just constantly keep missing the earth because the earth is in fact round, despite what you might see on the internet. Uh, and so they're in free fall the whole time. They feel weightless, but gravity is still acting on them. It's a big misconception people have. They think, hey, if you're in space, there's no gravity. And that's absolutely false. Astronauts still have the pull of gravity acting on them. Uh, and because they're a little ways away from the earth, it's a little bit weaker. Uh, but if we were to take this person or this elevator and move it off into space where the ISS is, there's still a whole bunch of gravity acting on that person. They're just in free fall. They feel weightless, but gravity hasn't given up on them. Let's look at one last situation here, and we're gonna make this a little bit odd, and it'll seem strange for a moment, but I'll explain to you exactly what's going on with this. Let's take this elevator, and let's attach a rocket to it. You know that seems strange? Why, oh why would we do this? Well, for fun. Because what I want this elevator to do is accelerate downward at 19.6 meters per second squared. Now that seems like a strange number and I'll explain to you how I got to that number in a second here. We'll give this little rocket a dome just cause. Uh, and I wanna go through, I wanna work out the force between the person and this elevator that we're now accelerating downward toward the ground. So just like before, we're still using Newton's second law. Uh, we're just gonna start right at this line here. The normal force, minus the force by gravity is equal to 50 times negative 19.6. What we work out here is that the normal force is equal to negative 490. So what's that mean? That means the normal force on the person in here actually has to be downward because it's negative. So what would this look like? This would look like the person standing on what we view as the ceiling of this elevator, a rocket that is accelerating downward. And here's the trippy part. This person would feel the same for normal force against the what they think is floor of this rocket as they normally would if they were just standing still. This person would think they were just having a plain old regular day. Nothing strange about today and they think they're just standing still when in fact they're accelerating downward at twice the acceleration due to gravity. It's a little bit of a strange situation, but it's how things work. Uh, so what I want you to realize in all of this, uh, there's a couple of takeaways from this. Newton's second law is universally applicable. Uh, the situation with the elevator always causes people some drama uh, just because they have trouble realizing that it's not gravity that changes when you get in an elevator. It's the normal force. The last thing I want you to take away, which is a little bit of an oddity, is that you don't actually feel gravity acting on you. What you feel is the ground pushing back up. So that is the elevator problem, and that's all for now. If we're waiting in line, but I didn't even ask you yet. If we're waiting in line and the elevator's going up, then what does F equal?